now in, in, in this message is the questions themselves and how they impact our lives today. So let us go back to those questions to see how they impact you and me today. With each question, I want us to examine it on two levels. With each question, I will examine them on two levels. One is intellectual or theological, and two, <clears throat> behavioral, how we live it out, right? Now, I, I, I don't want to examine what the Seventh-day Adventist church or what the Catholic church or what the Pentecostal church or whoever else believes. I want you to analyze yourself. Don't listen to me, analyze me. I want you to analyze yourself as I'm asking these questions, as I'm trying to, to, to apply them to us, how these questions they were asked in the Garden of Eden, as I take them and apply them to us intellectually and behaviorally, I don't want you to examine me. I don't want you to examine your husband, your partner, your pastor, your, your, your whoever. I want you to examine yourself, right? That's my aim. <clears throat> so the first point, the first question was, has God said, did God say the truth? Is God trustworthy? Can I trust his word? Does he have good intentions for me? This question relates to you and me more than we think. It has the power to fuel or to cripple your Christian life. Allow me to illustrate. For example, we read in God's word what God said, there is none righteous, no, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have gone astray. The question is, is this true? Has God really said there is none righteous, no, not one? I'm taking the question that Lucifer asked in the Garden of Eden regarding the word of God, and I'm bringing it to you, to your house, to your screen, to your ear right now, reading you the word of God and asking the same question to you to see how you will respond to it. You with me? <clears throat> the two levels that we're going to examine this question was, examine this question on is intellectual and behavioral intellectual or theological how do you align theologically how do you align with what god said in these verses how's your theological framework is it in tune with the word of god after reading the word of god i came to understand that i was a sinner lost separated from god and in need of salvation from the get-go that is the condition or, or status i was born into why? Because there is none righteous, no, not one, regardless who he is, regardless what age he is, regardless what race he is, none. Zilch. Outside of Christ, zilch, right? So theologically, how do you align to it? Is your theological framework in harmony with the word of God or is it not? You answer it. Again, forget about my theological framework. I want you to assess your theological framework. You, not me, you. Right now, behaviorally, I guess we all agree, doesn't matter what theological framework you have, we all agree that we all have fallen short. So I won't spend time on that. Now, this is the easy part. We easily accept what the word of God says about us when it talks about our sin, what we were, that we were sinners. Oh, yeah, man, you have no idea how bad I was. And the word of God is true. Great, great. Let's keep rolling with it. Let's see if the word of God is still true in this case. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life, shall not come into condemnation, but is past, past tense, ED, past from death unto life. Another verse. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me has everlasting life. Has God really said? Can you really trust God? Is the word of God true? Please don't misunderstand the point. The question is not, can you 
fulfill what God said. Satan made Eve question God's trustworthiness, not her own trustworthiness. Big difference. The question is, is God trustworthy? I don't care about you. Don't care about me. It's not about, am I trustworthy? Are you? No, 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 no. We are irrelevant in this equation. Is God trustworthy? This is his promise. If you believe, you will receive. If you believe, this is your identity. So the two levels of the question, theologically, how do you align with God's word? How do you align with this word, these verses on the screen? Do you trust his word? Do you accept it as your personal reality? I'm not asking you to give me a theological dissertation so you can analyze me and others and this denomination and that denomination. I really don't care. My question for you is, the enemy is asking you in your ear, has God really said, is the word of God trustworthy? <clears throat> Imagine the enemy is asking you, is what Jesus said in John chapter 5, verse 24, and in John chapter 6, verse 47, is he trustworthy? <clears throat> My question is about you. As a believer in Christ Jesus, does your, not mine, forget about me, does your theological framework allow you, not your son, not your dad, not your wife, not your pastor, allow you to accept that you, put your name there, that you have everlasting life, that you will not come into condemnation, and you have already passed from death unto life because you put your trust in Jesus. The